Welcome to the Science Classroom. Welcome back. This is the uh, plate tectonics uh, video series looking at convergent plate boundaries, looking at the ocean to ocean. So what happens when an ocean crust, ocean plate, smashes into another ocean plate? So in previous videos, we've done about um, continents, uh, continental plates smashing together, and also the classic ocean to continental plate boundary, the diagrams and features. So we'll do the same thing here. So we're going to look at the the diagram and how to draw it, how to build up the information, looking at the features that are associated with this with this uh, diagram and this process. We're going to look at the uh, again the processes and how it forms the different features. We're going to look at the examples where these are around the world and how we connect them into the larger scheme of plate tectonics. We're going to look at uh, a bit more detail on the dip angle of that uh, subducting slab. All right, so looking forward to uh, doing this. And uh, guys, here we go. All right, so here we go. Here's a diagram. Now, what I've drawn is the two converging plates. Don't forget, the plate is the combination of the crust and the lithosphere. And we have two ocean plates. So we know these are both thin plates. They are both made from mostly saltic rock, which is our extrusive igneous rock that derives or comes from the mid-ocean ridges or the spreading centers. And here we have our active margin basically with subduction so they're between you know five to seven kilometers thick so what i've drawn is these thin plates and we can add in the layers right so i've kind of done two different colors the purple ocean plate and the other the black ocean plate so it's convergent so the first thing we can do is we can add in our convergent arrows so the this plate here is converging in this direction and we also have our subduction area we also have this plate um generally moving towards okay towards um the other one so convergence so as you can see that there, there are different features already just based on the, the the diagram between these two plates and there's a reason for that now so we can add in the crust and the lithosphere the crust and lithosphere. All right, below that we know is obviously the moho is crust lithosphere boundary, um, but also we can add in our asthenosphere down here. Now, the asthenosphere has the convection currents. It is our plastic ductile region with some uh, magma flowing around. So we have the same, uh, obviously, arrows because the compression currents are the ones that are driving the plate movement above. Okay, we got some slab pull, got some slab push from the ridge over here. So we were mid ocean ridge there somewhere. And also we have the conversion of these. Now, what happens here when they meet is this is going to go down like this. Okay. Now, this leads to some uh, down welling, some movement down of the convection currents sinking. And that also drives um, the subduction as well, as you can see. And we have our lovely ocean. So let's get into this, dive into it. So subduction. So the first thing that we can look at is subduction. Now, subduction happens uh, between, now, generally, we always say, well, density and negative buoyancy is going to drive subduction. Density being which plate uh, between the two that are converging, which plate is going to be the denser plate. And that, uh, when you look at the uh, two oceans, usually it's the, always the ocean plate. When you have two ocean plates meeting, you have to figure out which one now. Because they're both made of salt, the next thing we'll look at is which one is older. The older plates, 
plate has been formed and been moving across the Earth's surface for a longer time, that's further away from the mid-ocean ridge, that one is going to be thicker. Because as it moves away from the mid-ocean ridge, it starts to cool down. It's that the the, um, the the actual crust itself and the lithosphere actually gets larger. It gets thicker. When it gets thicker, it gets a little denser and also colder. And this leads to that plate being able to subduct, or what we call under thrust. Okay, so the movement under the other plate. So we assume that this plate on the left, this black plate, is going to be the older plate because it's subducting. It's further away from the ridge. It's older, thicker, denser, and colder. Therefore, it's going to subduct, as we see in the diagram. The purple one, we assume, is the one that is younger, uh, thinner, warmer, and less dense, or more buoyant. But this one has all the features. Now, the first feature we have is, obviously, uh, we have a lot of oceanic sediment, okay, that builds up on the surface and the top part of the crust. And this sediment is going to be drawn down with the subduction. Now, these rocks uh, could be some limestone, some shale, uh, some breccia, right? But they're going to come down. And when they go down, they go through stages of metamorphosis, changes. Going to change into metamorphic rocks. So metamorphic rocks such as green schist and eclochite. So green schist, green schist is the first kind of metamorphic rock that basalt chains, turns into. So basalt is going to turn into this uh, metamorphic rock through higher temperatures. So as it descends down, obviously the geotherm is going to increase in temperature and pressure, but more temperature turns into green schist. And if it continues down deeper, with uh, exponentially more pressure, then uh, it turns into eclochite down here. So you also have the sediments, right? The sediments are going to have a lot of water. So you're going to have a lot of addition of water, right? Um, so hydrous minerals, a lot of hydrous minerals um, in these rocks. And once it gets down to a certain depth, around about 200 kilometers down, so way into the asthenosphere, you're going to get pressures where the pressure is going to squeeze out the water. Right? So dehydration is going to occur, and the water is going to lower the melting point of the, um, the crust or lithosphere or asthenosphere around on the on the plate that is um, not subducting, so this side of the diagram. So you're going to create a lot more uh, magma right here. It's going to come up and, through, and flow up through the crust and lithosphere of this plate, and it's going to, and it's going to form some volcanic activity, some volcanism right here, and create what's called an island arc. So a chain or a line of volcanoes that are a certain distance from the subduction zone or from the trench, which is right here, varying depths of trenches can occur with these two uh, converging plates, but you have a certain distance whereby it takes a certain time for the subducting slab, which is this here, the slab, to descend down to about 200 kilometers where the temperature and pressure is such that dehydration happens, and this is called flux melting, where this happens and it can rise up and form volcanoes. So generally it's around a certain distance, you know, 100 and 150 kilometers, you know, away from the subduction zone that can vary, but it's a certain distance based on the, also based on the angle, what we call a dip angle of the subduction, uh, subduction slab. If it's too, it's too shallow of a dip angle, it wouldn't actually cause too much melting or cause more compression here and cause more orogeny and, more, and to create more, uh, more mass of, of the crust. Whereas if it's, a, if it's a higher, steeper dip angle, it'll go down deeper and cause more flux melting and then more volcanism. So it depends on the dip angle and also um, how fast this slab is descending. 
So we have our trench, we have our volcanism, our island arcs, our little, our little islands, volcanic islands, like in the Caribbean, that are formed through this way. Now, over here, over here, this is interesting. Over here, we have our, um, you know, area of accretion. Accretion is the addition of extra material that has been scraped off from the subducting slab and put onto this plate here, and it basically accumulates. And we call this right here a four arc ridge. And the, pre the, the, the motion on the movement up is going to be uh, counteracted by this depression right here. And we call this a four arc basin right here. So the four arc ridge is that higher area of accreted um, material, okay, accretional wedge or accretional prism. So we got accretional. Wedge and or prism by the shape. And we have this four arc basin, and that basically separates the four arc ridge to the uh, volcanism of the island arc chain here. And then behind it, what happens is here, which is kind of cool, we have this descending uh, basically magma, right, down with the convection currents, the xenosphere. What happens is it comes down, but also it's going to write, it's going to basically, because it's being pulled away, like in the atmosphere, and you move gas and, you know, and, and air is going to be replaced, right? It causes different pressures in the atmosphere. It's the same thing in the asthenosphere. If you move the, uh, the, the magma this way, it's going to be, want to be replaced. So it's been replaced by some asthenospheric upwelling. So there's some upwelling here from the asthenosphere of some magma, and that's shown by some magnetic anomalies. You can see that, and it comes up, and it's going to start to form a spreading center. And it's going to cause what's called a marginal or a back arc basin. Or a marginal basin, where you get this little bit of a spreading center, where the upwelling is going to push its way through, okay? And this is called a... Diapa or DRP, which is basically a French word that means that something is pushing through the crust. There is uh, some sort of material, in this case it's magma, right, pushing through the crust. It could be usually a salt dome or some other kind of mineral deposits or dome shaped um, upwelling, but in this case it's magma coming up through here and causing this back up basin, which can form like a, a marginal sea in between the, 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 the coastline of the continents and these, and these, uh, these island arc chains. So you see this a lot in the Western Pacific Ocean, the Philippines and that kind of area in Japan. We get these, these islands form uh, through volcanism, and you get a little, little sea between the islands and the main continent. Okay, same thing in the Caribbean. So this is called a uh, diapir, which is that movement up that's uh, breaking through of the crust of material. In this case, it's magma. So this is how we get our volcanic islands. A great, connect, great example is the Caribbean or the Western Pacific, where you have this deeper, uh, more sharper dip angle creating the volcanism with the different ranges. And that's how I'll do it in the classroom, guys. I hope this helped. Um, I'm gonna do videos on certain locations. I'm going to do a video more on this dehydration process and the uh, process of changing the igneous and sedimentary rocks into metamorphic rocks and the pressure. So check that out as well.